Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. I thought I'd go over a few points from yesterday's game against Liverpool. Anything you want to discuss, though, please get it in the chat and we will discuss some of your comments throughout today's video. Obviously, over the last few weeks, we've all been worried about your lack of sleep. Did you get any sleep last night after the game? I slept like a baby. Everything I wanted, I got yesterday. I wanted a draw. Well, I thought it would be a draw. I also wanted to dent Liverpool's uh, championship title uh, credentials. and That's what we did. I slept like a baby, and I think I'm going to sleep like a baby till the end of the season. Yeah, I'm just going to go over a few uh, quotes what Casemiro come out with after the game. And he said, being 20 points behind first place, sometimes I can't even sleep to try and think about doing something different. It's reality. There's no point in thinking about the title or even the Champions League places. We need to think about today's games. We need to think about the day to day. We had the opportunity to get nine points in the last few games, and we have two. We were upset. We have to think about game by game and focus on the next match against Bournemouth. Brutally honest there, where they are at the moment. He talks about focusing on the next match. They've no focus. No focus. We've seen that. Yeah. Seen that with United all season. Talks about uh, points difference, going for a Champions League place and everything. Uh, no chance. The focus is not there and hasn't been there for a long time. I thought it would turn around uh, in the new year. It's not turned around. The focus is clearly not there. That you see each game is completely different. And then you also see uh, something like a pattern where they just aren't able to get there at the end of 90 minutes and consolidate when they're in front. There's no focus here at the club. I don't think the, the squad is in harmony. I think when he talks about focus, I think he's sort of blind to really the reality of what's going on. What did you think of his actual performance yesterday, Casemiro? I've seen a few pundits basically saying he's been left exposed, but how many times have we all discussed that this season? Is that the case why we've seen you know, poor performances from Casemiro? Because he's been left exposed. Sounds like an excuse, uh, what's going around there, as though like he's been exposed uh, and the players go around him. But Tomini gets exposed, but he doesn't get the pat on the back saying, don't worry and all that. Different player, world-class player, uh, everything he's got, uh, he's earned. But the thing is, he's slow, he's not been able to run back, he goes up front. I like him when he goes up front, but he's exposed at the back when mm. someone presses. We're here in the Premier League, football has totally changed. I thought he would have kicked on this year. He had a decent season last yeah. year. I think the, the squad as a whole, uh, obviously there's a few real big disappointments last year, Liverpool away. Uh, but at the end of the day, I thought he would have kicked on. But I think this year it's exposed his legs. He hasn't got the legs. He's too slow, he's too slow in the tackle and everything. And I think he knows that. I think the manager knows it. Uh, he's got the experience and, and, and I do like him. From free kicks and that, when he's up there, mm. he does the business. You've seen it yesterday from a free kick, ball come across and he gets to the back and he heads it right across. Why wasn't someone in the middle to put it in the net? Uh, I don't know, but he had a bad game yesterday. He just seemed to lose all focus. So when he's talking about focus in the comments and that, he lost complete focus yesterday. I seen him clearing the ball and that, and it was just like, it was chaos. It wasn't he even... He did put us under pressure at times as well with his distribution. It was... You know, Non-existent. Poor, yeah, poor to say the least yeah. sometimes in midfield, yeah. especially with, with simple balls as well. Yeah, he, he, he was just kicking wildly yeah. at things. And that's that, that, there's no focus there. Uh, so it did put us under pressure. He had a poor game overall yesterday. Mm. Uh, doesn't always have a poor game, but that game, he stood out first half and second half, didn't improve. One or two things, that was it. But that's not good enough. Yeah, Gary Neville said after the game as well on his podcast on Sky Sports, he said, Manchester United's style of play and the way they play is mad. Some of the things you see out there, you wouldn't see at schoolboy level. He's only saying what we've all said for a while. Lots of people out there have been saying it for a long time. It's schoolboy football. It's under 12s. It's a kickabout. It's like there's no plan. Uh, there's no commitment from certain players and certain players seem to do what they want to do. They, get, they run up there and they don't run back. It's, it's just schoolboy football. We all know that. Gary's repeating what's out there, what everyone's been saying. It's nothing new. Uh, and to be honest with you, when you look uh, at people focusing, 
Casemiro talking about focusing with seven games to go. So where's the focus going to be for that? Uh, I, I just want the end of the season to come. Uh, I don't think there'll be any focus and I don't think anything will change. So what Gary's saying is what people have been saying for a long time and they'll be saying till the end of the season. He did go, go on to later say their structure at times defensively goes from being in shape and being OK and then they go to all of a sudden emptying the whole midfield. P players press on their own without the rest of their teammates going with them. We all know about the midfield, don't we? I mean, this, every man and his dogs talks about midfield. We've said it till we're blue in the face about the midfield. The midfield has not been there as a unit from the start of this season till yesterday. Is that the problem then with this shape and the tactics from Eric Ten Hag that you've got some players who are taking on the instructions, wanting to press as a unit, but then there's one or two, maybe three, who aren't joining in with that? I think it's the, uh, the reality uh, of what the problem is. Players can't do it. Uh, they're just accepting the reality and they're just playing, as Gary says there, uh, they're playing like they're on a school field or something. Yeah. Schoolboy football. That is the reality. And players have accepted it. They've accepted that it's mediocre. It's day-to-day. -day. They're, not, they're not looking at the reality of going forward. They're not focusing on going forward. They're not planning going forward. The club isn't planning on going forward. We've now got someone in, who's in there, Ratcliffe, and he's going to change things. But the reality is, it's just day-to-day -day management, and that's what the manager's doing with these players. That's what the players are doing to each other. They're just managing from day-to-day. -day. No wonder Casemiro right, hasn't been able to sleep because he just doesn't know what's down the line. He's panicking every day he wakes up going, what's happening today? You know what I mean? Sounds, that, like, it sounds like he's in the no-sleep club like you in the last few weeks. Oh, he's definitely been in the no-sleep club because it bothers him, which is good. Mm. Which is good. It shows you that he cares and, it, and, and it's bothering him. Some of these players, they, they don't seem to care. They don't, they don't seem to be bothered. Mm. But with Casemiro coming out, I'm losing sleep. It's affecting me. Uh, and unfortunately, it might be affecting his game. Uh, but the thing is, what is the plan? He might not know the plan. From what, from what he's saying there, there doesn't seem to be a plan. And he's baffled by it. We're baffled by it. No sleep club. There's lots of people out there who haven't been getting the sleep. And, and, and honest, it's affecting him. It's affecting us. And all you can say is seven games to go. And then after that, there has to be a plan. Yeah, just going to dive into the chat. Uh, Akash Paul, cheers for your super chat, mate. He says, the whole team is completely disjointed. You can't throw the kids into the mess. Otherwise, you burn them out. Best example of this is how Pep has handled Phil Foden. Unfortunately, the, the kids have had to come in. It's the kids what have rescued us. It's the kids what have shown the mm. enthusiasm. When you look at some of the established players there, they've let us down. You know, you look for the established players, there's guidance and that, and it's just not been there. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I use them words again. Focus, the established players haven't been focused on what's needed. There's been no leadership qualities been shown. You know, Maguire was the captain, then Bruno was the captain. And really, you've got to say to yourself, what, what qualities have they shown in leadership? I've not seen it, to be honest with you. It's not been what Manchester United expect from qualities and focus and leadership. A little snippet from what he said after the game, Tenag, and he said, you see how we are improving and the potential of this squad is amazing. And I'm proud of it. Well, I don't go along with that. You see how we're improving. We're not improving. It's the same thing every game. You know, go out there. There you are, Eric Ten Hag says. There's the plan. There's the tactics. And then next thing you know, it's exactly the same. Once they lose or give away possession in that midfield, they seem to get overrun. And then suddenly, it's like schoolboy football, just running here and there. And where, what you're supposed to do is when you go forward and attack, supposed to all go forward and attack. And then when you have to defend, you all have to come back and defend as a unit. You don't see Manchester United playing as a unit, as a cohesive, like, get the ball at the back, this is what happens, boom, boom, boom. One, two, three, four. You don't see one, two, three, four. You see one, two, and then it's carnage. People panic. People just hoof the ball. You've seen it, you've seen it time and time again now. There's no, no plan. Well, there is a plan, sorry. There is a plan.
but it goes pear-shaped every game. And I mean every game. And then it's a matter of like running around and just trying to get something and get a moment to either get back in the game or to take the game away from the opponent. So, you know, it is poor. We know it's poor. Uh, and at the end of the day, the next seven games possibly could be poor. But what is the point of criticising and moaning and really having a rant and that when we all know what we've got to do? We've got to get to the end of the season and then regroup, dust ourselves down and then say, right, now here's the plan. Let's get the pre uh, preparation done and then let's kick on, get the right people in, on and off the field and then move forward. There is no point ranting and raving anymore. Yes, we had Liverpool. Great, great fight. Great to come away with a point. Great to dent the things. We've now got one game to go where it's Arsenal in the league. That's the big game and we can dent them and upset them. And to upset anybody is fantastic in my eyes. So that's what we've got to look forward to. So hopefully we can rise to the challenge there. But can United rise to the challenge against Bournemouth? Yeah, well, that's the big one. And that's been a lot of problems this season against teams that are lower than us in the Premier League table, like Bournemouth, yeah. you know, Fulham, etc. Nottingham Forest as well. But I'm just going to read out the rest of what Eric Tenag has said as well after that uh, match. And he said, he's got very mixed emotions. On one side, I am disappointed that we have dropped seven points in one week after being in winning positions. But we, but we have to blame ourselves for making stupid mistakes. On the other side, I am very proud, like you mentioned before, but... You, know, you look at the Chelsea game, loads of mistakes there. Loads of mistakes, and the reality is, so I'll, I, I'm not going to go right heavy on him because he is right with the, real, mm. uh, with the reality of dropping points, right? But they've not been good enough to hold on to him. And yeah. that's, big, that, that's down to the players uh, and in-game management by Eric Ten Hag. So they've not been good enough. If you're good enough, you'd have held on to him. And they've not been. And the in-game uh, management by Eric Ten Hag has been poor. He has contributed to it. Uh, has he got the right personnel to make the proper changes and secure them points? I don't think he has, but he's not helped himself. Squire Seven, cheers for your super chat, mate. He Thank says, you. Uh, there's too many egos in the team, hence no leader. Love the channel, lads. Nice one. Appreciate it, mate. I think it, when you talk about egos in a team, you have to have egos in the team but are these the right type of egos when you look at egos you look at Eric Cantona's ego absolutely I'm the man I can do what I want to a certain extent I'm not going to get criticized by my players because I'm Eric Cantona that's the ego you want that we haven't got that what we seem to have is people with egos who have earrings in diamond studded earrings in big chains, social media accounts and all that. There's the ego, but that's the wrong type of ego. And when they're on the pitch, they think they can just stroll around, right, while the teammates do all the running. That's the ego. And unfortunately, that's the poison we've got with some of these players. So I get exactly what he's saying about ego. Yeah, you're talking about egos. I don't know if it's the right comparison, but, you know, Kobe Mainu yesterday, I don't know what I was more impressed with, his actual goal or his celebration in how cold he was celebrating as all well, like, yeah, this is me, this is Kobe Mainu, this is what I can do. But his just whole reaction, it was just calm, composed, just like he is with the ball at his feet. Yeah, it was funny with uh, Kobe Mainu uh, listening to the game yesterday and, and, and watching him. When he scored the goal, he already knew before the ball was in the net yeah. that it was going in. So that was good. But I thought to myself, listening to the game and listening to the commentary, and especially Gary Neville, it was like Gary Neville was putting a downer on Kobe Mainu. And I thought to myself, where are you going with this? He's a young kid. Really, we're now relying on Kobe Mainu against Liverpool. You know, that's how fast he's come on in football. But it was desperate to have somebody so young to, to sort of lead the team. And he rescued United there with a fantastic goal. Uh, but Kobe Mainu... He's coming on leaps and bounds. And I've said it before, and I think some people out there have said comments as well. We don't really need to rush him. And, and, and I'm of that view. We don't really need to rush him now. We've got seven games. We're not going to qualify for anything. Uh, we don't want to qualify uh, for a couple of things. But that Champions League went a long time ago. The Europa League, forget that. Uh, so there's that just conference cup. So we don't want that. So really, there's opportunities here for Kobe Maney to sort of like get his energy back, refocus and sort of like stay in the squad, but be on the bench a couple of times. 
There is no need for Kobe Mainu and risk him burnout because that's what will happen to some of these youngsters. And unfortunately, they've been forced into it. So any criticism, and I heard bits of criticism mm. in the commentary, uh, not just by Gary. Mm. Uh, they were pointing out a few things, which was fair enough. But there's no need to rush this kid. Absolutely no need. Yeah, he was also talking about another young kid, Willie Cambuela, and his performance against Liverpool. He said his progress is amazing. We were convinced he could do the job and he has done it brilliantly. I am very pleased with him, very happy. And it's another signal and message of the future of Manchester United. I think that's more out of relief uh, because there is no way in this world he had uh, Willie Cambala focused on this game. He was only in because of the injuries what was there, but we've said it time and time again. Youngsters like uh, Willie Kambala have to be given the chance, right, in the games, and he's only got it because of that. But he's shown Eric Ten Hag. So I, I think he's been a bit disin disingenuous there, right? He's only in there because of the injuries and what he's done now. He's forced Eric Ten Hag's hand. I'm here. I stood up to Liverpool, yeah. who think they're going to win the league, who came to Old Trafford to battle and take us apart. And they only failed because they couldn't put the ball in the net. And then they suffered in the second half for their missed chances. But he stood up to it and he battled all the way through. He never gave up. He was, he was committed. I like the smile on his face. He plays the game in the right way. And he's shown Eric Ten Hag, I've been given a chance. Now, unfortunately, when you've seen players, uh, young players come in uh, and being given the chance, they don't take it. You know, even established players yeah. what have been let out. You, you, you look at uh, Van der Beek, time and time again, he was given the opportunity by Ten Hag to come in, mm. right, and get cement his place. And he failed. But Willy Kambala has now not, not rubbed it in Eric Ten Hag's face. He sort of like stood up in front of him and go, I dare you to drop me now. Superb game, first game at Old Trafford against Liverpool, I'm better than any of the others. I'm the future. That's what he's saying to Eric Ten Hag. So Eric Ten Hag is be playing little games with words there. Well, with Casemiro coming out and basically saying, you know, the mood of the squad, that they don't expect to get in the Champions League places, isn't and that this the perfect time with the amount of games remaining to give these younger players a chance now until the end of the season? So we know if they're actually good enough to step up then for next season or whether they need a, like a loan spell. You know, you look at the left-back position, we had the young kid, Amas, on the bench. Should he be given some minutes? I'm not saying start the games, but maybe give the last 20 minutes just to see how he steps to it. It's going to be difficult to introduce what, what I don't want, and I've seen it before, when, when the season fades away at the end. Suddenly, a player comes in from nowhere, what you're not expecting in that. Mm. And, and they play terribly, and it can affect them, right? Mm. You, want, you want a player to come into a team, right? What's trying, what's putting the effort in, mm. what's got something to play for. Always okay. a lot easier putting them into a winning team, of course. Well, not, not necessarily a winning team. Mm. A team what knows what it's doing, that there's a plan on the pitch, okay. and that the kid or the youngster can come into it. There is no plan. What... what I say there is no plan. There is a plan, but it all goes pear-shaped. We've seen it. Right? So to put a youngster in, it can have a bad effect on a young player. And I've, I've seen, like I say, I go back, I've seen it time and time again, where somebody's been introduced to the team towards the end of the season, and then they disappear. Because it's like they have a, like, what's this? And then the confidence goes, and you don't really want to push a young player into a situation like that. I think what may happen... You might see Ericsson back in the team. You know, players like that coming back into the team, get themselves fit, put them in the shop window uh, for selling in the summer. That's what may happen. Uh, instead of just fading away, uh, players will be put in the shop window and given a chance to show that, hey, I'm still capable of it. I don't want a young player coming in, not in the last seven games, someone new. Yeah, it does sound to me, though, going off Casemiro's words, that the focus now is just basically on the FA Cup as well and getting to that final. Well, it seems that way. Uh, and, and when he talks about focus and uh, everything, it's all about day-to-day. -day. And it, it's not about the plan. It's not about going forward. There is no focus going forward on the big thing. There what isn't. You mean, wait, what, you explain that to me. No focus on what big thing going forward. Surely there's a plan in the background with the transfer window coming up and for next season. No, that, that, that's the management side of it. I'm on, I'm on about the players. Right, okay. they, 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 
Casemiro says it himself. They're just focusing on day to day. You know, they don't know what to do. I, if I'm a footballer, I'm with the squad, I'd say, right, lads, this is what we've got to do for the next two months to achieve this. That hasn't been there. And that's basically how I interpret it. They just look at day to day uh, and, and then see what happens. There is no big focus from this squad on what they've got to achieve in four weeks, in eight weeks' time. That That's what's been missing. And that's why you're seeing games and Gary's correct. It's just like an under-12 side playing on a school uh, school field, running around. Uh, it's mad, mad football. Well, there is no focus, is there? Well, you talk about focus, day-to-day, -day, plans, etc. Do you think Casemiro's plan is to be at Manchester United next season? Uh, I Going forward, Manchester United, I can't see keeping hold of uh, Casemiro. I think the, the Premier League, in the way it's played now, this season, I think, has caught him out. Uh, I think his legs are going. Uh, I think there's moments in games uh, that is good. Uh, but unfortunately, the role what he does at the back, when someone comes at you, and I think having players like Casemiro and tactically having players in that position mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why we're having so many shots against us is because they're being run around. The ball is just getting played at the side and through him, and they're not able to turn and chase and follow a man to the edge of the area. I, I've just seen that time and time again. And it's not just from Casemiro. Yeah, he was also asked about Rashford's uh, injury, why he come off Eric Tenag after the game. And he said, yeah, I'm not sure, but I don't think it'll be long term. But, you know, if he doesn't, uh, well, if he's not fit against Bournemouth, surely Anthony has to start, you know, taking all of these opportunities getting. Yeah, it, listen, if he's not fit, then Anthony will, will come on. I think that's a shoe in to be honest with you. Uh, but for him to turn around and say, uh, I'm not sure uh, what... But he's basically saying, I'm not sure what's wrong with him. I haven't got a clue. Baffling that. It's, every time the sort of injuries in that, Eric Ten Hag sort of like ignores it, doesn't want to tell the truth or suggest anything or update anybody. Uh, I think that's because the medical team don't know what they're doing either, so if they don't know the answers to it, Eric Ten Hag's not going to know. Listen, he could have just turned around and said, he had a knock on the knee, we'll see how it is later, see in the morning ah, if yeah, it flares yeah. up. Oh, he's had a knock on the ankle, uh, we'll see how it is in the morning, it'll flare up. That's all he had to say, but he just plays these silly games at times when it comes to injuries with players, uh, and to be honest with you, it gets quite nauseating time and time again keep listening to it yeah anything more to add no uh I'm, I'm obviously like thinking about yesterday going forward yesterday i'm happy with that a lot of people thought uh you know to turn around listen I, i'll say this liverpool if it was united on the other foot right going to win the league Every Liverpool fan, every YouTube channel, every media outlet would be screaming blue murder how they stopped us, right? Yeah. Winning the league or possibly winning the league. I mentioned it yesterday. It was fantastic that we stopped, uh, that we put a, a, a bit of a halt, halt to their, their charge. And as a football fan, right, you've got to like gloat. You've got to go at the enemy. It's the enemy. I went at it, and people are talking about, oh, that's disrespectful, you shouldn't be talking like that, you know, you should be talking about this and that. Absolute rubbish. Yeah. Absolute yeah. rubbish. The shoe was on the other foot, right? We'd be getting pelters, slaughtered and everything, and every Liverpool fan would be slaughtering us. And the Liverpool fans, what came on yesterday, right, try to criticise me for what I said after the game, right? Absolute jokers. Yeah, couldn't pour it better myself, to be honest with you. But I'd just like to thank you all for joining us today. The chat's been absolutely popping off. Loads of different opinions in there. It's much appreciated all the time seeing your opinions. If you've enjoyed the video or you want to help support us, leave a like on the video. I think we've just gone over 69,000 subscribers yes, as well. Thank you. So that's a huge and massive effort from everyone out there. And we're really proud of it, to be honest with you. I couldn't be humble enough. But if you want to spread the word, get us up to that 70,000 mark before the end of the season, I think it'd be an absolute fantastic achievement. And yeah, I'd just like to thank everyone out there who continually gets involved in the channel we'll be back tomorrow with another video so get that notification on and you enjoy the rest of your day everyone thank you much appreciated